This video is a continuation of what's inside a pinball machine. In this video I'm going to take a look at the various playfield elements that you as a player can see and I'm going to show you how they work. What I mean by this is anything that you see on the playfield, I will show the mechanism behind it and how exactly it works. I'm not going to be going into how points are scored and what controls the devices so much. However, this video will be continued with another video where we talk more about the mechanisms that actually control the point values and things like that in the machine. But for this video, we're just going to take a look at what you as the player can see and show you a little more of how it works. So I'd say the best place to start out is the mechanism that you, the player, have direct control over. The flippers. Now, on the top side of the playfield, they're pretty simple. It's just a bat that moves when you push a button. The mechanism underneath it is what's more interesting, so let's take a look. This is the flipper mechanism as it appears on the underside of the playfield. You may recall we looked at this in the previous video. You have your coil and the shaft or plunger which make up the solenoid. When power is run through the coil, that forces the shaft of the solenoid inside of it because of an electromagnetic field. The coil is very powerful and it's actually too powerful to stay on for any length of time. So flipper solenoids are actually two solenoids in one. You may be able to see that on the back there are three different terminals. Two of them represent the high power winding and the other two represent the low power winding. They share a common negative. When the flipper has reached its end of stroke it opens this switch. This is called the end of stroke switch or the EOS switch. This switch, when closed, allows power through the high power winding of the solenoid. When the switch is open, then power is only allowed through the low power coil. This allows for a very high powered kick, but allows the flipper mechanism to stay in the up position without hurting the solenoid. You can tell that there's a large difference between the low power and high power coils by manually moving the flipper out of position when holding down the flipper button. So you can hear a slight buzzing when I have the flipper button held down, but if I reach and move the flipper out of position, the buzzing gets much louder. You can't see it in the video, but also the lights on the machine are all dimming when I do that. It's using quite a lot of power. In terms of the actual linkages, the plunger is basically attached to this piece which rotates. The shaft of the flipper is coming down through the playfield and this holds on to it by the use of a couple Allen screws. So when the flipper is, or when the solenoid pulls back on the flipper, it causes this shaft to rotate, which then moves the flipper up on the other side of the playfield. So that's pretty much it for the flipper mechanism, and now we'll move on to some more basic parts. This is called a stand-up target. It's the simplest target there is. When the ball hits this, this is actually part of a switch as it moves back it completes a circuit and that scores the points. In this particular machine this target only scores a thousand points but when the target is lit it will score an extra ball. This is the spinner. Many machines have spinners and it's a piece of metal. It's basically a metal square that the ball goes through and causes it to spin. And each time it spins it scores however many points it says it will score. So I can spin it by hand you can see that's, that's how it works. So when the ball goes through it, like this, it scores points. You can also see it, it works in both directions. Spinners can change their point values. Oftentimes, after hitting a specific target, it may increase the value to a thousand points per spin. This machine, it's not set that way. And truth be told, 100 points per spin is actually pretty good for a machine that only goes to the 10,000s. This is the underside of the spinner mechanism, and it's actually a lot simpler than you might think. This is just a long leaf switch that at the very end has the contacts. It's connected through the playfield to one side of the spinner, and the cyclical motion of the spinner causes the switch to frequently open and close. So let me spin it from the other side so that way you can see what this looks like. First I'll spin it slowly. So you can see when the spinner is at the top of its position, then the switch is closed, but when it's in its resting state, the switch is open. So when it gets spun really fast from the ball, it looks like this.
and that opens and closes the leaf switch quickly, and then that's what gives the scoring effect. It's actually quite a simple mechanism for the effect it produces, and generally spinners were quite popular. One thing I thought I'd show you from the underside is what the various lights look like from the bottom. This is called an insert. Anytime that there's a piece of the playfield up top that glows at a certain time, that's called an insert. And this is actually the special when lit. Basically, it's just a hole in the playfield that they've inserted a plastic circle into, and then the circle can be any color. Sometimes it has text on it. This one is red and says when lit on the other side. It's very simple. There's just a light bulb beneath it, and when it needs to come on, it comes on. I've placed a clamp light on top of the machine so we can see some of these parts a little better. This is called a kickout hole. It's not a gobble hole. In a gobble hole, you lose your ball. A kickout hole, simply the ball will rest into it and then it will kick it back out. That's why it's called a kickout hole. Now, in principle, or in practice, it looks like this. So the ball will rest in it and then get kicked out. The way this works is this little peg here is a switch. That's what actually activates the circuit. And then this little piece here comes up from the underside of the playfield and pushes the ball away. So without the ball, it looks like this. At the very end, along with the third chime, you can see this piece move out really quickly. Actually, you know what? I'll put my finger on it so you can get a better idea. See it? My finger bounced. Anyway, kickout holes are pretty simple. Uh, this one's actually fairly unique because it's carved in like this so that way the ball will kind of roll towards it, kind of like a funnel. I haven't seen this before and it's a pretty cool design. It allows weird patterns like if the ball goes past here, it might roll sideways. It's something I haven't seen before. Normally it's just a hole this size and it's more of a target that you have to get the ball into. This is the mechanism for the kickout hole, and it's both complex and simple at the same time. It's simple in that all it's doing is moving this down, which moves this lever, which forces the ball out of the kickout hole. The reason why it's complex is because the lever system itself is kind of complex. There's two different springs, and it's also adjustable so that way you can change where the ball goes once it's kicked out. But this switch here, this is what actually tells the machine that there's a ball in the hole, and that usually will energize the kickout hole relay, which starts the sequence that both adds the points, and at the end of adding the points, causes the solenoid to fire, and thus kicking the ball out of the hole. On either side of the kickout hole, these are called lanes, and they have a rollover switch in it. A rollover switch is a little wire switch, and we'll look underneath to see what it looks like on the bottom. But the, when the ball runs over the wire, it pushes it down, and that's what scores the points. Now, this is just called a rollover. When a rollover is in between a space like this, it's considered a lane. So as I push it with my finger, this scores 500 points. And in this case, we'll also light the green lane and bumper. This is the underside of a rollover. It's actually just a simple leaf switch. This piece of wire here is attached to the wire that's above the playfield, and when the ball rolls over it, it pushes the two parts of the leaf switch together. I'll push it down with my finger. You can see the movement of how it's happening. These two leaf switches cause the 100-point uh, relay to energize. Actually, it's the 1,000-point relay in this machine. And the 1,000-point relay will then cause the bell to ring and also move the score reel. So it's a very simple mechanism, just that little wire causes the top part of the leaf switch to move into the bottom. This is what's sometimes referred to as an umbrella target or mushroom target. It's kind of like an upside down and backwards rollover. Instead of the ball pushing down on it, the ball slips underneath it, which pulls it up. And the action of pulling it up scores the points. So I'll slowly move the ball under so you can see what happens. This will actually move up quite a bit, and that's what scores the points. I don't often see these targets in pinball machines, but since this one has it, I thought I would show it to you. This is actually the underside of the umbrella or mushroom bumper. It's actually quite simple. It's pretty much the opposite of a rollover. In a rollover, remember, you have a leaf switch that's a little bit open, and then when the ball hits the wire, it forces itself shut. Well, in this case, it's forcing itself open in its resting position, 
and the bumper when it's lifted up actually closes the switch. So you've kind of got an interesting situation whereby if the switch were to be at its resting point it's closed but it's actually pushed open which is backwards from a normal rollover. But it's really quite simple. It's just a spring-loaded target that when the ball hits it is lifted up just a little bit which then closes that switch. And then same thing it will activate the 500 point relay and in this machine will also activate the yellow or green uh, bonus scoring functions. Right next to the mushroom bumper on this machine is what's called a captive ball. And a captive ball is simply another pinball that's being held in place by certain playfield elements. And you can hit the ball directly with the other ball. The captive ball in this machine will travel up here and score 1,000 points, or if this is lit, will also advance bonus for each of these two rollovers. And if special is lit at the top and you hit this target at the very back, you'll get a special. So to show what this looks like, I'll just hit it with my finger. So if you hit it with the ball just right, you'll throw the ball up in there. There's really nothing special about a captive ball target such as this on the underside of the play field since it uses standard rollover switches and a stand-up target, so we won't take a look at the bottom. The pop bumper is one of the most fun parts of any pinball machine. So then we can get a better view of these two, I'm going to light them up. The way they work is when a ball touches them, they propel the ball away from themselves at a very high speed. I'll demonstrate just by rolling the ball into this one. The reason why they're fun is when they get stuck between objects or even themselves, they create a very repetitive motion, can score a lot of points, and are fun to watch. Now, to give you a better view of how these work, I'm going to take the pop bumper cap off of the green one. Now, don't worry, I only ever use a drill when removing parts. So inside the pop bumper, we actually have a light bulb that I'm going to take out, so it's a little easier to see this. And this is called the pop bumper ring, and it moves downward through a solenoid. What happens is when the ball gets stuck here, the 45 degree angle of the ring forces the ball against the play field and then forces it outward. Actually, pop bumper wear is a common problem because of the fact that it's forcing the ball into the play field. You can see wear spots here on this bumper, and they're very bad along the back sides. Anyway, when the skirt gets touched by the ball, which is this part on the bottom, it completes a circuit which energizes the pop bumper relay and then energizes the solenoid. So what it looks like in operation is this. It's actually kind of funny because people who are messing around with the pinball machine for the first time with the glass off will often hurt themselves by putting their fingers here and then getting pinched. But anyway, the pop bumper is pretty simple from the top, but the mechanism beneath it is a little more complex. So that I can give a better view of the pop bumper assembly, I've actually removed the play field from the machine. The way the pop bumper assembly works is when the skirt is touched by the ball, it causes this switch here to move down. It's hard to show how this action happens, but when I move this little plastic thing, you can see the switch moving. Now, when this switch gets closed, it actually energizes the pop bumper relay. The purpose of the pop bumper relay is so that way the switch doesn't have to carry so much power through it. Because not only does it have to move the pop bumper down, but it also has to score points, and therefore you have a lot of functions that need to happen at one time. That's why it's gone through a relay. This switch here is called the end of stroke switch. It has a very important function. When the pop bumper relay is energized, it actually is self-locking. So that way the pop bumper will force its way down all the time. And it will stay locked until the end of stroke switch opens. Basically, the coil of the relay is grounded through this switch. So that way, when the pop bumper is activated even just barely, it will force itself all the way down. This allows a ball that has maybe just brushed past the bumper to activate it fully, and that way the ball will still be thrown away at full force. The way that it pulls down is actually quite simple. You can see that the solenoid moves towards itself, and then that pulls down on the two sides of the ring that we saw above. It's actually quite a simple mechanism, but it's hard to work on because everything is so stacked like this. 
Here we have a slingshot. Now slingshots basically are a type of kicker where when the ball touches them, they kick the ball away. They actually use the rubber ring to make a kicking action. There's a piece behind it that throws this out. You can see that when the ball hits it. It's a little hard to see because it happens so fast, but that's what it's doing. So to give you a better look at the mechanism, I'll take the top off of this one. Now in this particular slingshot, the one screw in the cover is holding down this post, so I can't demonstrate how the rubber ring moves without reinserting the post. But basically, when the ball hits the rubber ring, it moves one of these two switches in. These are unique because most switches in a pinball machine don't carry the current to move a solenoid. These switches are high current switches and they're connected directly to the solenoid, which is underneath. So when the ball hits either of these switches, it forces this solenoid out. And the action of moving the solenoid is actually what scores the points. So I'll move this in with my drill. This is a high voltage machine, relatively 50 volts at the solenoid, so I don't want to touch this barehanded. But you'll see when this moves together, the solenoid kicks out. This is the underside of the slingshot and you can see it has a solenoid that's positioned perpendicular to the playfield. When the solenoid is energized, the plunger moves downward, which moves this linkage, which creates a lever that then has the kicker mechanism above move out against the rubber ring. This causes the ball to fly away from it. This is what the kicker mechanism looks like from underneath. One interesting thing is that the switches that are above the playfield actually don't score points. It's this small switch right here that scores the points. Whenever the solenoid moves out of its resting position, it scores 10 points. And you can easily see this by moving the solenoid by hand. I've barely moved it, and yet it scored points. Another interesting thing that happens with slingshots is if the switches get misaligned or the rubber ring is incorrect, it can create a stuck situation where the slingshot will repeatedly fire. The problem with this is it'll burn out the solenoid pretty quickly. I'll demonstrate what that looks like. If this happens to your machine, immediately turn it off and find out the problem. It's not that common, but when it does happen, you need to shut the machine off right away to prevent the solenoid from burning itself up. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video on the different playfield elements of the pinball machine. Unfortunately, this machine doesn't have any drop targets, and I would have liked to have shown you that mechanism because it's quite interesting. If I run across a different machine that has dropped targets, I'll throw in an annotation and a link in the description to a different video where I talk about those. Anyway, this video was basically made to show you the parts that you as a player can see and how they work. I didn't intend for this machine to be a how does a pinball machine work type video, and I want to get a different one up later with those aspects. There will be a link in the description if that does get up. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope you thought it was informative, but also entertaining. because. Pinball is kind of a very unique subject that most people probably aren't that interested in. But I think that the mechanisms that operate a pinball machine are actually quite interesting. Anyway, I'll sign off with this video like I always do with I'm Alec, also known as Edison Phono One. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.